We've looked previously at how Net Promoter Score is handled with Microsoft Forms Pro and how you can calculate it, but it's only calculated on a specific survey. So here we're looking at a negative five Net Promoter Score, but it's only based on a survey about tell us how we're doing. We might have the Net Promoter Score on multiple other surveys. If we look and drill into this, we can see here we've got a number of detractors, promoters and passive customers. So these are people, if they're promoters, they given us a 9 or a 10, they're really excited about us as a customer, they would tell other people how great we are and so on. On the other end of the scale you've got your detractors, those that give a 6 or below to a 0, they're the ones that are not happy with us, they will go out on social media and tell others why they're not happy. And then you've got the passives, the ones in the middle, 7 and 8, um, yeah they're happy enough but they're not likely to go out and tell anyone why or how happy they are. So. Again, that's for a specific survey. How can we go ahead and calculate this for your organization as a whole? So to do this, we need to do a little bit of customization and I'm doing this with for Dynamics 365 customer engagement. So if I go into my environment, I'm going to go to solutions and I've got a solution for net promoter score. So I'm going to go through and show you some of the things that you'll need to set up. If you want to see exactly step by step every single field and, and what it's for, you can go to meganvwalker.com and then have a search for the blog post about incorporating net promoter score using Forms Pro. So the first thing is we're going to have a global option set. So that global option set is going to have three values and that's the promoter, the passive and the detractor. So this is so that we can actually set on the contact record which of these net promoter um, score types they fall into. So that's the first thing. Then if we go to our um, contact entity, we can go into the fields and we'll have a look at the fields that we're going to add. All right, so one that we need to do is that net promoter score type, which is using that global option set. We need to go ahead and add that, and again, use and reference the global option set. Then what we need to do is we need to have a series of um, different fields that are basically allowing us to populate what the score is that's been given on the survey, what the type is, what the date is that that survey is completed, and then what the specific survey is that they answered. So that's four different fields. We're going to do um, the current values for those and then we're also going to have previous ones as well. So actually let me display it um, based on the name. So if we have a look, um, we can see we've got the net promoter scores, the current values, and then we've got these previous ones. The last updated is going to be a date and time field. Um, we really just need the date. Um, NPS score is a whole number and that is going to be set between 0 and 10 as your values because that's all we're able to give for Net Promoter Score. The Net Promoter Score survey is a lookup to the survey entity from Common Data Service. So have a look on, on the blog or within YouTube for another video where I talk about adding the Forms Pro entities into a model driven app so that you can actually access the survey and the survey responses within um, Dynamics 365. And then the last one is that um, option set field and that's the look up to the global option set um, for the NPS type. We're going to do the exact same things again for um, additional fields and they will be set up the same. You're just going to put previous in front of it. That way what we can do is we can track and we can see has that customer's perception of us, has their, their level of, um, of happiness, has it improved or has it actually um, worsened? So we can see what was the previous um, score that they Give, gave on a specific survey so we can track that as well. So that's everything for a contact. You go ahead and put those on your form. Then we'd go to the account and on the account we need to add some new fields so that we can track um, the number of contacts and that's the um, active contacts. That's going to be a whole number field and it's going to be a roll up. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll up and we're going to count the number of contacts linked to a specific account, but we're only going to count the ones that are currently active. We don't really care about the ones that um, are no longer active at that company. So that is going to be something that we can then use to compare against another field, which is the number of net promoter score contacts. So again, that's going to be a whole number, a roll up field. And we're going to say we only want to see the contacts or know the number of contacts if they're active and then also if the net promoter score field contains data. 
what that just then allows us to do is just kind of have a comparison of, okay, well, maybe we've got 25 active contacts at a company, but only two of them have ever given us any feedback. So that could be something from an account manager perspective that would be useful. Then we're going to do the net promoter score. I'll come back to this one. Um, what we're going to do then is we're going to have a series of fields um, for the number of different types and then the percentage of different types. So you can see there the number of detractors is a roll up, same with the number of passives and the number of promoters. What we're doing there is we're basically doing similar to the previous one where we're counting the number of contacts if the status is active, but also if the NPS type field equals promoter. Then for the percentages, we are doing something similar, but this is calculated and we're doing it one for each type of net promoter. Um, so again, passive uh, promoters and detractors. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a calculated field that is the number of detractors or passives or promoters divided by the total number of net promoter contacts multiplied by 100. So that's going to give us the percentage of those that are detractors. Now, the important one is that although the idea of this is to get an overall net promoter score for your organization, it's also going to be helpful to know which accounts, which of those customers of yours are the most happy. So in order to do that, we want to calculate the net promoter score for each individual account. So again, this is going to be a calculated field. What we're going to do here is this is the net promoter score calculation. We're just setting it at each account, at the account level, so we can see the overall score for that. What that is, is the percentage of promoters minus or subtracting the percentage of detractors. So that is going to be our calculated field. Okay, so those are all of the ones on the account. Final entity that we're going to add new fields to is the business unit and it's the exact same fields that we've put on the account we're going to set to the business unit. So we're going to do the exact same thing again. Also, just a reminder again, if you want to see a list of all of these fields and, and what you need to set up, you can go to meganvwalker.com and you can go ahead and search for the blog post on this. All right, so we've got all of our fields set onto this entity. Now, then what we need to do next is each time a survey is completed, what we want to do is we want to run a Microsoft flow that then says, all right, well, someone's filled out a new survey. We've got a new survey response record come in. What we need to do is check to see if there's a net promoter score questions being on that. And then we want to actually update and populate um, the net promoter score fields that we've got on the employee and we need to put them um, it into the specific fields. So, for example, um, if we have a look at, um, first of all, if we look at our account here, we've I've got a, um, on the form, I've got a new tab, and within that I've got three sections. I've got the overall net promoter score that's going to be calculated. We've got the number of net promoter score contacts, the number of active contacts, the percentage of promoters, percentage of passives, percentage of detractors, and then the number of promoters, number of passives, and number of detractors. If we then look at one of our contacts under this um, account and I go to the Net Promoter Score tab, I've got two sections, one for the current NPS information and one for the previous one. So we can see currently this person is a detractor because they gave a six on this date and for this specific survey. Prior to that, also on the same date, they gave a nine, made them a promoter for the same survey. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the flow. So if I go ahead and edit this flow so we can see, our trigger is when a new survey response is received. So this, let me just zoom in a little bit. So this entity name is the survey responses and the scope is organization. Now we don't want to run the flow if the net promoter score wasn't actually on there and there's no, no value in there. So we've got a condition that says if the NPS score is equal to null, so to put this in, if I just go ahead and remove this, go to expression tab and type in null, we can see it's there as an option and then we just click OK and it'll populate it. So if the NPS score on the survey response is null, meaning there's nothing in there, so that would be a yes, do absolutely nothing. If no, we want to get the record and we want to get the contact record that, is, that this survey is regarding. So the regarding field on the survey response, that's the contact we want to get. 
Then what we want to do is we want to update that record. So again, we are looking for the contact and the record identifier is the contact ID from this step up here. So if I just remove this and then I search for it again, so I'm looking for the contact from the get record step, which you can see right here, and I'm just populating that in there. All right, so we're updating the record and what we are updating is we're updating any field that we've just added that's related to that NPS stuff. So if I just keep scrolling down, we've got the NPS last updated. So from the trigger, which is the survey response that's come in, we're taking the date created. From the um, trigger again, that NPS score, we're populating that into the NPS score field. We're populating, let me just go down, the NPS survey, we're also populating that from the survey response entity. If I go back, back up now to the previous values, I'm populating that from the get record step where I've got the contact. Because if we've already got something in those NPS score fields, we want to put those and move them into the previous fields. So we're going to populate those again into those previous fields. Awesome. All right, now, what we also want to do is because we don't want to have to run a flow and then do a different workflow within um, uh, Dynamics 365. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to also populate this NPS type to say whether it's a promoter, a passive or a detractor. So now we're going to do a few additional steps. So we're going to add another condition that says, is the NPS a promoter? So for that, now we get a little bit uh, to where we've, we've got a few more layers into this flow. Is the NPS score greater than nine? So greater than nine, sorry, greater than or equal to, apologies, greater than or equal to nine. So that means nine or 10. If yes, then that means they are a promoter. So we're basically going to set the NPS type as promoter on that contact record. And we're doing that from the step above here where we updated the record. Okay, or you could do it from there. So I'm going to scroll back down and we're basically going to look for that NPS type field right here and we're gonna set it as promoter. Okay, so that's the first one. So we're saying, um, is the NPS score great, greater than or equal to nine? If yes, then do this. If no, we have to do our next thing to check to say, well, is the NPS score less than or equal to six? That's a detractor. So then we set that NPS type field as detractor. Finally, are they a passive? And for that, we've got two, we're saying, is the NPS score equal to seven or is the NPS score equal to eight? If yes, then set it as a passive. All right, so those are all of our steps. So let's go ahead and I will fill out a survey. So let's go ahead and complete this. So previously, Gemma was a detractor. So let's say she's really, really happy again. And this time she's gonna give us a 10. Awesome service and then we'll go ahead and submit that. Okay, so on submission, what that's doing is that's creating that survey response record that it's putting into our Dynamics 365 environment, or it's putting into Common Data Service rather, and then we've got that in our app so we can actually see it among with all of the other contact data. So once that's created, if I go through, and let's see if this is running yet, give it a minute. We'll try and be patient. <laughs> um, let's see if it's actually already in here. Let's see if we've got... Okay, yeah, so we've got the, the record in here. So the record has now been created and it's linked to, to Gemma Wilkins. Let's go back in and have a look. Ah, perfect, so succeeded six seconds ago. So if I now go back into Gemma's record and I go to the net promoter score, Awesome, now she's a promoter. We've updated it, her score is 10. It's got today's date and the survey. And we can see the previous stuff is what we had in at the top before and that's the detractor. So that's perfect. So now if we go into the account and I go back into um, the ABC company to the net promoter score, let's recalculate this and save it. 
we'll just go and refresh. Okay, perfect. So now we've got one promoter and one detractor. So that actually gives us a, a net promoter score of zero for this specific account. Now, the other thing in terms of actually getting your overall um, organization's net promoter score, that's where the business unit comes in. So if I go into security and I go into my business unit, what we'll see is I've got fields that I've put on the bottom and we've got the overall net promoter score here at the bottom is zero. We've got the number of total net promoter score contacts in the system, active contacts, and then the percentages of promoters, passives, detractors, and then the numbers of those as well. So there you go. There's a little bit of setup, but to me, it's worth it to be able to get an overall net promoter score for your organization um, rather than just getting it for a specific survey. So a little bit of setup, and then after you've done that, great, you can have a look and see what your overall net promoter score is. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.